I picked up this old uh, cast iron pan at an antique store and it was in pretty bad condition. So I took that as an opportunity to improve my uh, cast iron restoration process by building an electrolysis tank. And I just wanna show you kind of my process and what I did to restore this pan. And at the end, I'll cook up some eggs and show you how to uh, use a cast iron or carbon steel pan to make it perfectly uh, non-stick. And what we've got is a Wagner Sydneyo with the stylized logo, heat ring, and just single number down there. And that puts it in the early 20s, maybe 1920 to 1924, uh, just based on the sources that I usually go to. Uh, pretty rusty, a lot of carbon buildup. Um, we'll toss it in a lie tank and see how it comes out. All right, so I got it out of the bath and gave it a pretty good scrub, uh, but it looks like there's still a layer of uh, some buildup on there. And this is where the electrolysis tank comes into play to remove the final bit of buildup uh, carbon and rust from the pan. An e-tank has four basic components. It's got an anode, a cathode, an electrolyte solution, and a power supply. Now, in this case uh, for cast iron, uh, the cathode is the pan itself. The anode, the sacrificial anode, which is gonna be attracting the um, crud from the pan and rust is gonna be uh, some type of steel on the outside of the pan. The electrolyte is a solution made up of water and washing soda, sodium carbonate. Okay, I got 20 gallons of water in there. So I'm gonna add about two cups of this uh, super washing soda. And then finally, we've got a power supply, which will be providing um, power for the reaction. Now, I really have been wanting to make one of these for a little while, but the big problem with e-tanks is that a lot of instructions um, have you use old car battery chargers or other kind of hard to find or expensive um, product uh, power supplies or um, materials for the anode. Now I wanted to do this in as simple and inexpensive a way as possible. So let me just show you what I came up with. So the big thing is this power supply which is not very much um, power in there. It's five amps, um, I think, what, like 30 volts uh, power supply. And I just got this one off Amazon for 30-ish dollars. Um, you can get some slightly bigger ones that go up to 10 amps for a little bit more money. Um, I will link this particular product below, but this is could potentially be one of the most expensive uh, components of an e-tank build. But by getting just this cheap one, low powered, um, you don't need to mess with hard to find or expensive uh, products. I made this little sort of like a gantry to hang the pans from. All this is, is some plywood with a cheap hook, um, threaded hook and uh, just washer and bolt set up. Just got all that at Home Depot for a couple bucks. Now let's look at the anode. So for anodes, this is the material that's gonna be attracting uh, all of the rust and debris from your pans. And it's important that this is uh, steel, high carbon steel, um, just not aluminum, not galvanized uh, metal. Uh, it has to be just steel, because otherwise it's possible to create some toxic gases when you're doing your electrolysis process. Now, from what I've read, the power that we're using isn't really enough to develop some of those gases, but I don't wanna take any chances, so I'm going with just pure steel. Now, this could also be an expensive component or complicated component, but 
the option that I went with is this tie wire, which is just, you know, steel tie wire for rebar. And this whole pack is about, you know, 10 to $12 at Home Depot. And I just wrapped it around to establish a perimeter for my sacrificial anode there. And it is coated um, with uh, oil to protect it from rusting. I was wondering if I needed to take that off first. I did rub it off to attach my uh, lead uh, from the power supply right here, but it seems like it doesn't make a difference whether you leave that on or try to remove it. The one problem I encountered with this method is it does take a little bit of time to wrap this thing. I just spent the last, I don't know how long, wrapping an entire spool of uh, tie wire around this barrel in the hopes of being able to pull it off and then stick it inside. So uh, that might totally not work, but uh, let's find out. And I think that it also, once I do a few more pans, we'll see how fast this uh, degrades because the anode will break down and rust over time. And I'm not sure if this thin wire will make that process faster or not. So in the future, I might try to use just some actual steel rebar uh, now, but it's a little more complicated to get it set up right. Uh, and once this starts to break down, maybe I will mess with that and update uh, you with how that goes. Now there's one last component uh, to making an electrolysis tank, which fortunately I had on hand, and that is this plastic bin here. You need something that is deep enough and wide enough to hold your cast iron or whatever you are uh, putting in the tank. And I've had this one for a while. I think I did just get this on Amazon. This is like a 25 gallon drum. And this is perfect. Um, it is expensive though. That's the one item that you might need to look around for. You, If you wanna put up the money for it, you can just get one of these on Amazon. You can also go on Craigslist or Facebook and lots of people are selling these kind of barrels uh, for cheap. Um, that's one route to go. Or you can get just a large plastic bin at you know your Home Depot or similar store. But overall, this setup was extremely easy and fairly affordable for me to do. I've got my power supply uh, hooked up, running at four amps. We have a connection. This is an active connection, it's Sparky. And I think I can see some bubbles going on in there, which means it might be working. So we'll leave this and see if we get any results. Yeah, see, there's definitely some, some reaction taking place can see the bubbles being attracted to the anode, to the wire, which is what we want. So we'll leave that for a few hours, see if we get any results. Been running the tank for another few hours here, so I'm gonna check up on it, take it out, and see how the pan is doing. We're running at five amps now. Um, let's take a look. All right, so the electrolysis tank was a success. I left it in there overnight after a few hours of testing and it removed pretty much all the rust and most of the uh, leftover uh, carbon buildup. I did have to go in and scrape uh, some of that off with the razor um, where it was really tough. I mean, it might have been a hundred years of, uh, you know, buildup on there. So uh, let's take a look. So we've got... Wagner Sydney O, number 12, heat ring, get a cool handle there, looks pretty good. The surface has seen a little bit of wear, but that's good, that means it's been used. So my procedure after taking it out was scraped off anything that I could find, then scrubbed everything out with uh, the Scotch-Brite pad as best I could. Uh, washed with soap and water, and then immediately coated everything with some vegetable oil 
um, as much as I could get on there so that it doesn't rust. And then wiped it off with uh, some paper towels um, as much as I can get off. So now, even though it uh, doesn't look like there's oil in there, if you like put some water on. Yeah, so if you take some water, it's gonna bead up and not soak into the pan. So that means it's nice and oiled and I can put that into the oven and lock that oil on, um, you know, and season it um, at my leisure and it's not gonna rust uh, in the meantime. So I'll probably heat up my oven now and uh, show you the results once I get it out. I'm gonna take this out after one round of seasoning for uh, 40, 45 minutes at 500 degrees. It's cooled off a little bit, but still pretty hot. It's looking good. I might give it one more round of seasoning and then uh, call it a day. Still pretty hot. Pan is nice and cooled off, so let's see how it looks. Not bad. Looks like I got a little bit of extra oil on the outside there. I might try to scrub that off, but you can see it's pooled up a little bit. That's what happens when you don't wipe off enough oil. Here's this pan compared to my Lodge 12 inch. You can see it's much bigger, much more substantial. It's a big pan. All right, so I was able to remove all of the extra uh, kind of oil buildup um, from that seasoning round, got it all off fine on the sides, and all I used was just a little bit of this uh, gray um, scotch Bright pad, pad, and you can see that it didn't really, you know, it's not taking off the seasoning, it just removed that buildup of oil, so you don't need, if, if that happens to you when you're seasoning, you know, you don't need to, like, strip it down or anything, or if you just get some oil buildup, you can just scrape it off and you know everything will be fine i am gonna run uh make some breakfast and just run an egg test in this pan and see how it does i just did the two rounds of seasoning um in the oven at uh what, 500 degrees for like 40 45 minutes um with vegetable oil uh so we'll see how the eggs go now and this pan is so big that it doesn't even sit, you can see it wobbles there. But that's just because it's not, this thing is kind of messing it up. But if I put it just flat on the burner, there we go. That's actually pretty flat, no wobble. Overall for a hundred and something year old pan, pretty, pretty flat. So we'll do the basic procedure here. Set it to, I've got a 10 settings here. I'm just gonna turn it down real low, maybe like three. Don't wanna get it too hot. It's a big pan, maybe we'll go to four. And I'm just gonna let it sit there for like, heat up for like 10 minutes. Nice and slow, like with, you know, a lot of cooking procedures, low and slow. Um, get it nice, even heat on the pan. So it's been about five minutes and that's a little too hot. 400, I'd really like it under 350. So I backed it off to three on the uh, burner here and I'm gonna move it down even more. I'm gonna put this on like under two here on the, uh, on the burner because I just want this nice and even and not high temperature at all. I meant to take these eggs out a little bit before so they're not freezing, but you know, they've been sitting out for maybe 10, 15 minutes. So they should be not just putting a freezing egg on the uh, pan. A couple more minutes have passed and things have cooled out a bit, which is good. We're not over 400. I'm just gonna put on a little bit of oil. This is just vegetable oil. I'm not trying to cook with this. This is just to uh, get us a nice even surface here. This is usually a good idea when you're cooking with cast iron, just to rub on a little bit of oil before you cook. I'm gonna rub off as much as I possibly can. Don't 
really want to cook with this, just use it as a base layer. All right, that's looking pretty good. We're on two on the burner. Pretty good. 350 in the center. got an egg emergency here. I just smashed it on the counter. Wanted to do a third one because it's a big pain. Let's see if we can fix this fast. Some more butter. Turn it up a little bit. Okay, that was tense. Got the egg cleaned up. For the most part, get a little salt on here. Hopefully these didn't cook too long. How are we doing? We're gonna try to do a uh, reel over easy here. Some of my other egg videos, people have been saying that didn't do a reel over easy egg, but and it's true, so let's, let's try to do this just real quick. Okay, there's an over easy. You can see we're still cooking real low here. Oh yeah, not even 300. So we're not like cheating the uh, non-stick test by just blasting the temperature. I mean, you can see it's... Couldn't ask for more of a non-stick situation. Seasoning is not that important. Mostly just temper temperature control and uh, getting a little bit of oil on there. It's mostly the cast iron that's uh, doing the work. Uh, seasoning is very important though to keep it from rusting. If there's no oil or seasoning on there, it's uh, it is going to rust. But you know, like if you're cooking with it, it's going to season itself um, as you work. I'll do a little cleaning video too while we're at it. Warm water. Just got some dish soap in here. Dish soap and water. You can put the soap just right on it, doesn't matter. It's pretty good. Don't be afraid to get in there. You can use anything. It's not going to hurt the seasoning or anything. You just make sure you get off any built up oil or uh, burned on carbon. And all clean. You can see it's still oily in there, or at least the seasoning has polymerized because the water doesn't soak in. It kind of beads up on the surface. Uh, it's actually still a little oily in there. I might go and wash that out a little bit more. So that's all it needs. I've got like a uh, dish towel to dry it off because you don't want to let the water sit in there. But you don't need to put it on the stove. You don't need to, you know, put more oil on it. It should be fine. The way it is, you'll always put more oil on as you cook. Um, and that's it, it's dry. I'll hang this up. You don't wanna like stack it on wet stuff in a cabinet or something that uh, a drop of water could just stay on there forever and get a little rusty. Um, and you know, even if it does, you just scrub that off with the uh, Scotch-Brite pad and you're good to go. Um, but you know, no reason to do any more than that.